Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and B-Link has entered the NAS market with their ME N150. And it's an impressively compact design because nestled in this little palm-sized 99 by 99 by 99 millimeter cube is Intel's Twin Lake N150 microprocessor. It has 12 gigs of memory, built-in EMMC storage, 6 M2 SSD slots. It also has dual 2.5 gig ports, Wi-Fi 6, and a silent vertical airflow design, all powered through a built-in internal PSU. B-Link did send this to me for review, but did not sponsor this video, nor do they have any editorial control. Now, before we jump into the review, does anyone else think it looks like a board cube when taken apart? Let's get started. Now, the first feature I want to talk about is the $209 price tag. I call that a feature because that feature of charging $209, I know we're all going for the lowest price as often as possible, but at that price point here in June of 2025, other sacrifices are made. So if you're looking for a NAS that could take full advantage of NVMe speeds, along with have 10 gig of connectivity on the network interfaces, this isn't the NAS for you. And I haven't seen any available new at that price point, especially with this type of compact design. Now they have a list price here of 329 crossed out to the 209. That is 12 gigs of memory built in, 64 gig EMMC built in as well. They do have an option here for a little bit more for 329 where you can get it with the crucial two terabyte SSD. But let's look at the NVMe pricing really quick here because if you were to build this with SATA, it's not much less money. The $108 is the current sale price, according to Amazon, for this crucial two terabyte. And if you look at the crucial two terabyte in MVME, it's $115. The price points really leveled out on these. So now you're obviously leaving some performance on the table, putting MVMEs in this NAS. And it does break my heart a little bit to do that, to know that there's so much more speed we could have, but the reality is you wouldn't fit them in such a compact design. Now, taking a closer look at the way this is assembled, the MVMEs all push up against using some thermal pads, the heat sink that makes up the center mass of this. They have one small fan that doesn't have to work too hard to pull some air through and do the cooling from the inside out. The power supply as well, the built-in 45 watt power supply, I like the way that this is actually serviceable in the same way it is on the other B-Link models that I've seen with the built-in power supplies. It's just a few screws holding it in and it's accessible without decoupling the heatsink from the CPU. So if there was a problem or a need to replace it, it seems like it wouldn't be too much work to do. Now let's talk software. And I know a lot of you are asking, what about Proxbox? Well, Wendell's covered that for you. And I'll leave a link to his forum post here. But there's a couple of things that I want to address first. MMC is bad, or is it? And I think the problem with a lot of technical people is once they've been burned by something and they recall MMC having problems in the past and therefore they shall never use it in the future, but in 2025, it is a much more reliable piece of memory. So I don't think it's a big deal and Wendell and me are in agreement on that. But installing Proxmox on MMC requires some well, extras, you'll find them linked here if you're interested in selling Proxmox on that. He took the time to write all this up, provided you follow these instructions right here. It will run Proxmox and can be loaded on the EMMC, but let's talk about running it with TrueNAS. Now I've got this loaded with TrueNAS Community Edition 25.04.1, latest available here in 2025. And if we go over to storage and we go to disks, you'll see that, well, I didn't have enough disks to fill it all the way up. I only have five disks in here. I mirrored the boot pool and then set up a RAID Z1 for these three 1TB drives. And they're mismatched because why not? That's what I had laying around. Now, if we look at the data sets I created, I set up the RAID 305 pool. We have the Ocular Input and Unimatrix Zero. Want to keep on that board cube theme. And I loaded a few apps because of course it runs TrueNAS, but will it work the way you want? That's the more important feature. I have Jellyfin loaded, Net data. I set up glances in case you haven't seen this. It's just another way to see how much memory some of the Docker containers things are using. But net data is going to be more our source of what does the performance look like when we're running, let's say, four different videos. So let's go ahead and kick off a few videos here. We can pop this 45 drives one here and we'll then on this tab play. Well, this is just some B-roll of the device itself and skipping around here. Then we'll play this video for this one. Block that. If I mute myself, I don't want to hear me talking. 
Tom here from Lord. And I'll mute this one, but this is another video that is now playing. So now we have several different videos playing. We're not doing any transcoding, of course. We're just playing these videos. They are 4K. So if we go to the info and playback info and pull that up, you can see that 30, 40, 21, 60. We've dropped a couple frames here, but reasonable if you want to watch these videos and are playing on each of these. And let's take a look here at the last uh, five minutes running right now. Done. Make sure it's at force play. And we're pulling some data, but not consuming all the CPU. So if you wanted to stream several streams through something like Jellyfin, minus the transcoding, it seems perfectly well suited for that. I think that's a reasonable use case for people going, well, I need a small NAS server because I'm in a small area and I don't want something that's loud. Maybe you want to set this right next to the TV. It's in the studio right now behind me. I can't hear it at all. It does really meet the requirement of not being noisy. Last but not least, let's talk about the BIOS. The defaults worked fine for me. Wendell did mention the advanced settings you may want to change if you're setting up Proxmox under certain conditions of virtualization, but there is one change I really wanted to make, and that was restore after power loss. I didn't see this in here, and I reached out to B-Link, who said go to chipset, PCIO, select state after G3 from S5 state to SO state. I wish that was labeled in here, but it's not for those of you that are wondering, will it recover after a power loss? Yes. As soon as you set this, if you pull the plug or there's a power event and it was powered on, it will come back to the state it was in, which was powered on and boot back up automatically. If you're setting this up as a remote NAS somewhere and well, power events happen, this will put it back in the running condition it was in. I kind of wish it was defaulted to last running state or it had clarity here, but this is something B-Link uh, sent me in their documentation. Just wasn't as obvious, so hopefully this helps you if you were looking for that as well. I've only been using this a couple of weeks, but I haven't had any problems and I'm not really expecting any. B-Link's not new to the mini PC market. They're not new to building in the power supplies. I've tested other models and still have them in use in my lab and they've given me no grief at all. They have a good cooling design, so this thing's not running really hot. The fan's not working too hard. Obviously, with the little holes on the bottom of it here and then where the vents are here you'd want to definitely you know keep it dust free it seems like maybe it is something that could clog up a little but depends on how dusty your environment is i'd like to see one of these with more speed more ram and maybe a few more mvme slots maybe i'm overthinking it but i think there might be a market for a slightly bigger version i don't know where that market cap is before we just buy a full-size NAS and start building from there. But hey, this seems to be a pretty popular little device and I do like it. I would also like, and you can tell me in the comments, I'm too hung up on this, a Borg Cube edition, or maybe I just have to put some graphics or 3D print a Borg Cube version of the cover. I don't know, I just think that would be cooler on my desk if it looked like a board cube. I don't know, I'm kind of a Star Trek fan and if anyone couldn't tell this far into the video, leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. And I'll see you over in the forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com, where we can have a more in-depth discussion about this or other NAS topics or even any topic on the channel. Thanks.